Hello and welcome to Mother, Baby and Us, a photography podcast. I'm Christy and I'm creative director. And I'm Abigail and I'm the photographer at Abigail Lewis Photography. Mother, Baby and Us. Okay, so I wanted to do a podcast for so long because um, I just like podcasts. I listen to any podcast going... Christy will not listen to a podcast. I will try and put them on in work all of the time. And she's like, yeah, no, turn that off. It's annoying me. Which is great for wanting to do your own no, podcast. No, like, I don't mind a podcast if, like, I'm sitting there and concentrating on it. But, like, you can sit and edit while listening to a mu- Barmuda. <laughs> she'll, she'll sit and listen to a Barmuda. <laughs> like, how can you well, do that yeah. when you're concentrating on editing a newborn baby? I don't know, perhaps it takes, like, the edge off it. Like, you don't really think about, like, how gruesome it is until... Because you're looking at... <laughs> cute little faces cute babies <laughs> I, I mean don't know. if there's any consolation like you know me and Kirsty would fall asleep um, to, to like see the movie the podcast and not only do we fall asleep we fall asleep quick it's like we've noticed so then, yeah we've noticed a full on difference between going to sleep with the podcast and without and uh, there's, there's one in particular where his voice is very very relaxing and even though he's talking about someone getting bludgeoned to death, it's uh, it's quite relaxing. So, yeah, you know, that's yeah. quite tame, really. That's yeah. the thing, in it. Like, I can listen to a true crime podcast and sleep quite soundly, and then I'll watch the news and be like, well, I can't sleep now. So, yeah. you know, that's the thing. Also, mm-hmm. for anybody wondering who that voice was, that was Palmer. Matthew Palmer. Hi, guys. I can't be seen. I am the MA. Um <laughs> But, yeah, I'm behind the desk, sort of helping the uh, the, the ladies run this, uh, this, this, this podcast. Yeah. He's also a videographer and lighting tech that for too. all our shoots. That too. So, yeah, I am. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, so I want to do a podcast because I listen to a lot of podcasts and there is a severe lack of newborn and maternity specific podcasts. There's a lot of photography podcasts that talk about generalized subjects and they maybe touch on newborn and maternity things like on an episode for a little bit. But they don't really go in depth on the actual um, industry and what it takes and the just in-depth yeah we went experience. we went into didn't we like when we were thinking of doing it we did probably do a scout about it's just it's not out there is it no so um yeah i thought there was a bit of a gap that we could fill with some of our knowledge and experience um and our ramblings yeah general rambling on rubbish and can i just ask right so <laughs> the with, with the um you say the photography podcast. I haven't yeah. really listened to any of them. I'm sort of, I'm done with the photography game in terms yeah. of, I, I find it too boring. Like people go, oh, I've seen the camera. <laughs> uh, it's, it's got like 25 megapixels. Yeah. I, I don't care. I really don't care. So do you tend to find that those po- those podcasts focus on the gear and Yeah, and I'm just not, I'm not into that. Like you say, it's boring. I don't, <clears> I got my camera. I've had the same, not the same camera because I do upgrade, but like I stick with Canon because that's what I've always like I kind of there was a deal on a Canon camera when I started college and I was like oh that'll do and then because I've had a Canon I've stuck with Canon and kind of I know how that works and how I can get make the most of that camera so I just kind of when I need something specific like like the 35 mil that we bought the other day like then I'll go and look and go right well what do I need and how where does it kind of I don't I can't stand listening about tech constantly and oh you need this camera now and you need this camera to do this and you can probably do it with the camera you've got, just with a couple of tweaks. and So I can't. And I don't want to listen to, like, nature photography and stuff like that. Like, that's not what I'm into. So, like, the, every photography niche is a niche. Like, it's very specific to that. Like, nature photography has no kind of... Bearing. Bearing on what we do. Yeah, there'll be some little bits that I go, oh, that could kind of... But, like, listening to that is, is boring me to tears so I want to listen to people who are in this industry that are tackling the th- same things we are tackling and coming across um, the same issues or like experiences we are having and going oh yeah that like we do that or that we've done that we can help with that do you know what I mean it's and we don't carry a lot of equipment anyway do we because like if yeah. we're on location mm. we've got to get a pregnant woman to wherever we go in so like our sole focus is carrying the least amount of equipment that we can get away with Obviously, we take what we need to get the shot, the shot yeah. but we our not, focus is on her rather than yeah. We're not we're not all about having every camera and every lens and the newest thing of mm. newest bit of equipment. Like I love new equipment. Don't get me wrong, but like it's not the be all and end all. You and pay, that's... get awful excited with new equipment, <laughs> but a that's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but 
it's usually I'm stereotyping a lot here, but it's usually men talking about oh I got this camera and it's like got this many megapixels like you said and I shot this because I had this camera and this lens and I needed this and that and the other rather than the experience that the customer and the image like behind the experience behind the image like I don't the camera is the last so stupid of a po- photography podcast but the camera is the last element to that image like that is just a tool you use to take that photo there's so much that goes on apart from the equipment that those podcasts didn't kind of get for me so so here we are. <laughs> so here we are. That was a yeah. long way, with, way winded way of saying, I don't enjoy boring podcasts. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, so a little bit of background from us then. Um, I started Abigail Lewis Photography back in 2012, which is, is coming up our 10 year anniversary. Um, it was like everything photography. Like I, w- I had no business calling myself a business um it, i did events i did photo booths i did um weddings kids but i had no idea how to shoot kids that sounded really bad i had no idea how to photograph kids <laughs> i did do, do you type shoot and then go yeah i'm gonna have to change that word or something yeah. else i do it all the time um i had no idea like what i was doing really it was i was still in university um i had an idea for a business and kind of thought well let's just do it and see where, where it goes um and obviously those were formative years like if I hadn't done that I wouldn't have made the mistakes I needed to make to get to where I am now but like it was a hard slog like I was working um part-time uni part-time and running a business part-time no I was, I was in uni full-time um and run, running a business part-time and like it was just I was just I was running around willy nilly when I, I was just yeah. doing anything and everything was when I, when yeah I with really hands. terrible lights and like I didn't really understand how lighting worked and it was just anybody asked me to photograph something I was like yeah I'm there <laughs> which is great like it's for experience but like the photos are atrocious sorry if those are your photos but like they so bad yeah but everyone's got to start somewhere and yeah the progression from then so there's been, since then, there's been one, two, three, this is our fourth studio. It's our fourth studio, yeah. So when once I left uni, I went to, I went to work for Starbucks, back to Starbucks for a bit, just to get a bit of money behind me. And then I was like, I can't do this anymore. The final nail on the coffin was when a woman tried to attack me over a cup of coffee she didn't even buy. Um, so I was like, I can't do this, I'm leaving. And my parents helped me start up my first studio because Christy made them <laughs> and then Christy swanned off to another country and they were like what on earth you told me she was you were going to help her and yeah I convinced them to put all the money into can you give Abigail some money because if she doesn't try it she'll never know will she and then she swanned off to be a wedding planner in Cyprus um <laughs> it's a lovely time <laughs> um yeah so that's I, the... I, sorry I, I should I should interject as well when you say your parents helped you a lot of people might think, oh, well, mummy and daddy's... Oh, like, yeah, no, 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 we're okay. talking, like, you know, you, 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 your parents are working class. Yeah, oh, yeah. like, valleys. literally give me their savings. And yeah. was like, this is all I've got. Please don't spend it all. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And I'm still paying them back to it, this it, day. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't like, uh, you know, a business meeting at the country club. Uh, no, no, it was no. I was saying not. It was, like, literally a, cu- I, uh, a couple of quid. Like, I'm not going to tell about much. But, like, it was a couple of quid in my back pocket just to be able to buy the lighting and the little bits I needed and the, the deposit for the rent. That was like, and then literally my dad came down and we spent every penny we had building like um, partition walls in the place that I'd rented so that it was all private, like the studio area was private. And I was like, well, that's going to have to do. And then we kind of just did it from there, didn't we? It was yeah, like every month it, it was like, right, let's put a bit more into the business, buy a couple more bits and then take it. Like I didn't earn money for the first, I'm going to say five years. I was literally living on nothing for five years um, we still do that to this day though don't we where we oh yeah you're always everything... putting money back in but and like i don't think we'll ever earn mega bucks because we constantly went oh but that dress is beautiful yeah. and but like that that's like with us we are all about like constantly growing yeah having like new gowns and um making sure like our our props are always up to date and um making sure we're given the best experience all the time so we're still like that now when we like yeah, all of the money that we earn very we... frugal back then yeah it was, yeah <laughs> <laughs> like it was on a very low budget yeah um but yeah again if i hadn't had that studio i wouldn't have had no idea how to run this place now um it was all growing and learning and 
just doing it on the job, faking it till I make it. Um, again, like it was, I had no business running a studio. I went straight in with a, oh my God, I need this. It was a whole library, which was beautiful. I absolutely loved it. It was in my local area and I was like, yeah, I, w- I need that building and I couldn't afford it, but I went for it anyway. And yeah, I, again, I had no business doing it. But then um, uh, the lease ended on that place and I had to move because I couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I moved to another little shop. That was a kind of a stopgap because I also found out I was pregnant. So I was like, well, this will do for now because I'm going on maternity leave in a couple of months. So we kind of... Um, made do with they, that. Yeah, we just made do and did what we could with that place. And then as I was coming off maternity leave, a new shop um, went up for rent in our high street. So I was like, yeah, that's great. Let's have that. Nice double-fronted property, lots of like windows so we can advertise in there. Lovely. That worked for a bit. Then... It didn't, it didn't work. <laughs> um, and we were like, right, now is the time to buy somewhere. Christy had come off maternity leave the same time as me. Yeah, so enough. when I was on maternity, I was kind of helping you out a little bit when I yeah. just kind of to keep me sane. So I wasn't just stuck in the house for the entire time that I was on maternity leave. And I think we it just happened to grow, not just happen, because we put a lot of effort no, into it. No, we always knew we, that was the case, though, didn't we? Because it was too much work for me to do on my own, but not enough work to be able to, for both of us to be doing it and making any sort of money. So so the fact I was on maternity and I had some time where I could come and spend time and yeah. we grew it we to a point. We quite that, didn't we? When we given an allotted amount of time to go, right, just now or never, we yeah. kind of just like, right, okay, head to the... Thing. And then I when it came time it. for me to go back to work, <laughs> we'd grown it to a point where you couldn't do anything then, could you? Oh, no, so I had not. to quit and I had to... That sounds like, like I forced you. You, you no. were never going back. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but uh, we did. We grew to a point that I could quit my job and I could yeah. become part of the business then, wouldn't it? And then it was like, right, where can we buy? Because we didn't want to be renting anymore. There no. was no security in there and everything else. So we were like, right, let's buy a place. And that's where we are now in our beautiful new studio mm-hmm. i keep saying it's new we've been here since april this time last year though we hadn't actually bought it no we had an exchange we didn't have the keys we no were in money a f- being exchanged. we're in a flap because we had a load of builders a load of contractors we'll go, we go into that like in another episode because that's an episode in itself oh, yeah. like buying and but we had all, all the contractors sat waiting for us to, to, to well just to be able to get into a building that we hadn't even had the keys no. for we were all just sat there waiting. It was yeah. horrendous. It's mad, um, isn't yeah, it? but then it was all full steam ahead. We managed to get in here and get it all done in eleven weeks, and now we've got a completely bespoke, purpose-built new bonus opportunity studio. Mm. And the last year has been uh, mental, uh, mental, absolutely yeah, mental. Yeah, yeah, up to the point where we sat you now doing a podcast about it all. We are, yeah, yeah. So, With our awards behind us, yeah, <laughs> many awards. We've known each other since school, and I've sort of seen you guys come up in the sort of in the world of photography certainly locally anyway yeah um so i've seen this sort of this this journey from the outside and yeah mm. it, it, it makes makes a lot of sense and you've worked very very hard yeah. again you know so yeah this is like sort of the, the this is like the sort of final piece of what you've been yeah. trying to make and that, that said oh yeah so this is, like we still go in yeah like, yeah yeah this this is like the sort of beginning of of, of the, of next, the next, chapter. next chapter yeah as corny as that is mm. it is totally true and yeah, 100%. So, yeah, yeah and we'll never stop doing that we were always no. striving to get to like the next podcast what, what's, our, what's our next project i want to do a podcast no you're not doing a podcast yeah we're going to do a podcast and here we are <laughs> <laughs> i know it's happening <laughs> Um, for those of you who are listening to this on your preferred podcast app, um, we are also filming it for YouTube. Obviously, we're a photography outfit, so it kind of makes sense that you can actually see what we're talking about as well. So if you are listening, just pop on over to YouTube. Uh, there should be a link in the bio of this uh, episode. And yeah, we're, we're, we're going to talk with some images, aren't we? Just, yeah. Uh, yeah some, some stuff we shot recently. Yeah, so this um, session was in Bristol Aquarium. Um, we wanted to shoot there for a long time, didn't we? We went with the kids, as it always happens, and thought, oh my God, this is beautiful. So we got in contact with them um, after um, a client got in touch with us. We asked them if there was a way of hiring the aquarium so we could have it to ourselves, because obviously it's really busy and like nobody wants to be looked at and ogled at when they're having photos um and they were like yeah that's fine you can come in before the actual aquarium opens in hindsight that was 
we should have gone, mm, should we do it after it closed? But never mind. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. Getting up at crack it on to all run across Bristol with all of our equipment. Yeah, we, we, makeup call was what time? Seven o'clock, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah makeup call was seven in the hotel. And then. Um, we had Max Lee doing the, uh, the makeup. And, yeah. and, and really, thank God she's so fast because. <laughs> yeah, we really she's. Needed yeah. Speed. <laughs> we really needed the speed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we got in there at nine and we could, we only had the hour because they were opening into the public then at 10. So it was literally full steam ahead when it was mental. So this was the first shot um, or first location that we did. Um, we wanted to get the waterfall involved and everything else. So it was quite difficult because it was a tight space. So we wanted to... We um, were kind of rammed in there, weren't we? Oh, it was ridiculous. Um, and it's so warm in there because that's like a the tropical... tropical room, yeah. yeah, so like it was They'd warm anyway and we were all... Thing all crammed in like sardines so yeah that was um that was a bit of a a warm one yeah but what i, I was just gonna say what, what i like with this shot though is how wide it is considering how being there on the day yeah. and all of us being on top of each other literally with light in um you know you're talking the 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 the, the, the fill light there is millimeters at a shot if that I think I actually um, cloned it out. I yeah, think I edited yeah, so it out. The yeah. corner of it was still in because we could not you get could, any yeah, wider. Couldn't without. get any wider. So, so if you look to the to the um, to the left hand side, there's like a lot of like, stones and bricks and stuff, and we couldn't physically get past there without um, without my partner Kirsty uh, sort of manually holding the light on a boom. Um, Top and, lighting assistant. Yeah, yeah. She didn't like <laughs> Shout assistant. Out to she, she, she doesn't know her stuff with, the, with, with, with holding light in the right position. She's done it so many times for me. So, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, what, what I like about it is that, like I say, being there on the day, that was such a crammed little sort of nook of the mm. building. But there, it looks so wide and 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 epic. Really, it looks yeah. like, a, a, like like it's far bigger than it is. You know. Yeah, I think it's also helped by the that backlight that you put up. Was that the Godox light? That was indeed the Godox uh, so, VL300. Um, is it VL300? Yeah, it's, there's yeah. me saying we're not going to go into text. Te technicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> technicals. There's a VL300. Ba basically, <laughs> it's a very, very large um, LED spotlight that I uh, recently purchased, and it, uh, it, it it's very, very powerful. And as you can see, very good for backlighting because yeah. it sort of brought out a bit of texture in the in the floor behind her as well. But mainly, it's sort of backlighting that lovely sort of gown. Yeah, the back but end. also those trees because you like we would never have got all our green in otherwise, and we needed that for kind of for contrast. For I suppose, contrast, yeah. 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 Um, the reason I brought up that light was because in the aquarium we couldn't use flash photography, so that was in itself a nightmare because obviously we photographers we use flash photography. But since Palmer's been um, filming everything with us as well we've been using as much continuous light as possible um so that we can film and um photograph at the same time and it's been an absolute game changer in terms of how quickly we can get through a session and um light things so yeah that's no, been fab. I, I totally agree and uh, you know this is coming from a wedding point of view as well that the when i've done weddings um you, you know you, you've got to shoot fast because mm. you haven't got very long between you know the ceremony and food yeah. etc you've got half an hour at best sometimes if that um, so from weddings, obviously when I'm doing video, you do it next to photo at the same time yeah. to the same time. The um, the problem you've got though is that the photographer's using flash, and you're you're doing a video and then you're getting these sort of weird flashes over the top of the video. Yeah. So that's where they sort of came from, really. Yeah. Um, and like you said, if you're both using continuous light, you can both use the same light at the same time, and then speed and up great your shoot. for continuity as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you're doing sort of fusion stuff like we do, where there's video and photos, you can mix them up. You know, almost like identically next to each other. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I yeah, think it's been I, fab. yeah, that, I think that's a big consideration if you are going to do you know photos and video. Um, continuous light in these days is so relatively cheap and portable and the, Batteries are used to power them are quite good as well. I come from the day of like using um, you know, big Ari Fresnels again, talk more spec stuff, but basically stuff you had to literally hire a generator to power. Yeah. That was the only way you could do it. Now the light in the background there, back in the day you would have to power it with a generator. Now mm. you can just do it with lithium yeah. ion batteries. And that's why for years I have never used um, off camera flash on location because I couldn't physically lug that equipment. Like I have got joints that will just fall out of 
like place just by like looking at them so to for me to lug all our equipment it was just never gonna happen, it's never happen so no. like now that that's all starting to become more and more lightweight perfect and i mean i've got palmer there to carry as well <laughs> and i think as well it's, it's the, the, the other benefit with, with doing continuous light and obviously you know in this environment there's no um there's no sort of harm to any wildlife or whatever mm. right but i say wildlife is all in captivity but yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's no harm in the animals right yeah um but it's also i, I tend to think that with with led continuous light then the, the benefit you got is you see what you're getting yeah so i i mean I, I i use off camera flash as well i'm not averse to it but there is a there's an element of potching around with off camera flash you sort of take a shot yeah. look at it oh what can adjust. I do differently adjust it yeah exactly whereas with led lighting continuous you turn it on and that's what you're getting so yeah. it, it it makes it quicker in that mm. regard as well you know yeah definitely yeah so so yeah the, for, for this shoot it was um led continuous lighting um not a single flash there which is well if you told me if you told me that was all continuous lighting a few years <laughs> ago i'd have said you were talking rubbish but yeah <laughs> so, uh, i'm really happy with it so this yeah. is the first shot we did wasn't it yeah um because this was the one we had in our heads we wanted a yellow dress in the tropical like area um by the waterfall and all that um Christy, do you want to talk about posing? Oh, most of our clients, all of our clients, that's like one thing that they really don't, they're really nervous about, aren't they? Yeah. Um, is posing. Um, they, As they're you not, would be, like you expect Yeah, they're not, they're not models. They haven't done this before. And their body, this is new for them. Like they, they grown a child. Their body doesn't normally look like that, does it? Mm. So um, I always stand next to the, the client when I'm posing. Um, and this this particular pose we wanted her just to be kind of looking off into the waterfall um got the front leg bent just always. to give that always the front leg bent closest to, ca to camera um give that a nice hourglass shape um it pulls the dress in a nice direction so that the gown that we've got on you is very tight fitting right to the knee um, which is perfect for getting that shape um and then obviously the lighting has has really emphasized the bump um, the arm, so we've got one on the railings, just so that we've got that arm doing something, because that one arm sometimes can look a bit like, yeah. where's it going? And we don't always like to be touching the bump, because like, it's very kind of, there is lovely poses touching bump, and we always do have some sort of poses touching bump, but not in every photo, because if every photo you're We're touching your belly... To, trying to step away from that, and yeah, we like very the like, traditional... Um, yeah, it's kind of... Um, so that is just... So that her arm isn't kind of plonked somewhere. Awkward. Um, yeah, no awkward arms. And then the other one is very specific. And we do that on quite a lot of our poses, don't we? The, yeah. the hand there. That is because that gives that lovely... I'm pointing like that because this is the picture. Yeah. <laughs> um, it gives that lovely shape, that nice triangle. Um, it gives a nice arch of the back. And um, just emphasising that. It's all about emphasising the figure in it and emphasising yeah, that nice... For a lot of people, they think, oh, yeah, that's, that's a nice photo, like... That pose is nice. But it's literally from the tip of your toes to the top of your head, we will pose every little part of you. And at, at, sometimes if it, I think it, they might feel like, oh, I'm getting it wrong, I'm getting it wrong. But it's literally, it's just millimetres because obviously you're in, like, you don't normally look like this and feel like this. So your body kind of relaxes off a little bit because you're trying to think about something else. So we are there to make sure you get that one shot and then you're done because we need them to relax as soon as possible. Yeah. No, we don't want to put extra stress um, on their body because obviously they, they are well heavily pregnant at this point and we don't we don't want to add any extra stress on so we get them into position as quickly as we can and when we ask them to move it is literally millimeters in it so like if we say yeah. chin up it's literally just that little tiny movement can make a massive difference changes the line of like so many other parts of your body like just lifting your chin opens your shoulders up massively and and the biggest one is rolling shoulders back in there yeah. like that makes such a difference that gives you that nice arch on the back that just and it makes them just look more confident in general doesn't it yeah 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 these are all like sort of considerations that you know most people don't even think about and especially if you've never done it before more more yeah more so then um yeah it, it looks looks incredible and you know she looks incredible there um and it's amazing you can get that result from someone who's not you know used mm. to it like you yeah know, she's not a she's not, she's not a model she's no just she's never modeled before like she's yeah. not you know she never had a professional shoot before so yeah, yeah. she did really she well fab. Mm. but i don't think we've ever had a shoot that they somebody hasn't no left and i've gone she did fab 
sometimes they're a little bit more nervous and it takes a little bit more of like um, calming them and kind of getting them like warmed up and everything. But after you've done the first couple, they were always like, right, okay. Oh, my shoulders, I forgot about my shoulder. Like they're into it. They know what they're doing. They're like, yeah, I'm enjoying this. Because it's like you make, like, we don't, we like to make them feel like they're like a queen for the day. Like this is all about you and your journey into parenthood. This is documenting you for the rest of your life, how you brought this child into the world. You are an absolute queen. Like there's no doubt about it. And this is going to document that forever. And yeah, on that point, really, I think, I mean, from from, from a wedding perspective, I get clients say all the time, oh, I don't want any palsy ones. And I get, I get the sentiment, but I think a lot of it comes from feeling stupid yeah, like oh I, I feel like I look stupid because I'm pausing and it's really not the case no don't be wrong back in the day pausing <laughs> then that was a bit sort of you look away in awkward. photos now and awkward and corny and whatever right but it's come a, such a long way mm. that, that people always go oh well, well you know, yeah. I, I don't like I can pause in but I am and yeah. that's the whole point of pausing I it's think it's the social stupid. media generation though isn't it like yeah because we're all so used to like everything being everywhere you don't want to look like forced into that kind of oh look at me look look at how nice I look and everything but then when you've put in when a professional person that that does the job day in day out puts you into a specific pose that highlights all the like best areas and makes you look the best you can be there's a difference to having a selfie in a mirror and going oh my god look how good I look and this isn't look how good I look this is celebrating this journey and this you know this new thing that's happening in your life like it's a massive thing like bringing bringing a child into the world so it's a massive massive thing and and why shouldn't we celebrate what um what we look like when we go through that change you know you know you might feel a bit self-conscious now pausing like that but in 10 20 years time you're gonna look back and go wow i look like that look how amazing I was. Uh, and yeah you can put it on your mantelpiece for your kids to see yeah. well, kids look, look how good i looked can yeah you? oh my god and yeah that, that, that's 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 yeah, like really. her child, when when he or she is old enough to look back at that picture, they'll be like, oh, "Look at mom, look what look what she looked like. Oh my god, that's amazing!" Like they they are like that's what they like. My child they? does it now when he's three. He's <laughs> done it since like well ages. He's done, he gets the photo albums out. He's like, "That's me in mommy's belly." Yeah, it is. Yeah, oh, look at that. He absolutely loves it at three. So can you imagine what he's going to be like at eighteen? At like when he's got his own kids. Look at you, grandmother. When I was like, yeah. when she was pregnant with me. Look at do you know what I mean? It's just there's just nothing like it, is it? You can't you can't like, put a price on that. We um when when you look back at pictures, does doesn't matter what the pictures are, are of, but like even like grandparents or great grandparents that are not around, mm. like. You, you still look at those pictures and can you imagine great grandkids looking at that going look how glamorous my great grandmother was look at what she looked like when she was having you know my grandmother like when she was pregnant look at her like that's and, and that is that, that mm. that's what you would do with that picture and with that yeah. image mm. yeah. okay so this one was um, in the tunnel obviously she's in a fish tunnel um, fish tunnel sounds fish really tunnel. really bad <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds like the worst <laughs> ride to Disneyland. Oh. <laughs> Come on into the fish tunnel. I, um, okay, well, what would you like me to call that, Bob? I, well, I, I know you have solutions. Fish. I'm just here for the critique. I'm okay, not. thank you. Yeah. Um, I really wanted this one, didn't I, with a hand up? Yeah, it I didn't... wasn't so sure about it because in a lot of aquariums, that tunnel comes a lot, the glass comes a lot further down, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's what was putting me off about this situation because it was like a lot of it is taken up by dark space. Yeah, but I think we worked with it. I think yeah. it's okay. And um, we we tried a different pause, didn't we? In this kind of scenario, but it just yeah. I think it was the light that scared the fish away, and there's not enough fish in it. Yeah, those well, fish are whoops. photoshopped in. Yeah, that that was that that, that was something that we got to sort of uh, yeah. I haven't heard this story because you came off and came over and said we've had to tell it off, and I was like, all oh, right, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll yeah, leave it till the a, end, and then an it never exclusive. got cleared up. It's an exclusive for everyone. So basically. <laughs> oh. What I wanted to do with this was um, there was an access level above the uh, above the sort of tank. So if you think of it, this is like on the on, on the on the floor level of the tank, and above that, like twenty feet, is like another floor. So we gained access to above it um, and put our big massive light in there, um, put it at a hundred percent, and while it did a lovely job of lighting uh, the model. That it did sort of scare the fish a little bit. Yeah. So um, I say a little bit, quite a lot. 
Yeah, there, there was no fish. We were like, well, there, what's there, going on? Yeah, the fish there was no left. fish. So, um, but thankfully, I mean, I, I ran back down there to, to record the video of this. Um, Kirsty was there with, with with the light, and the guy was like, "You got to turn that down." So she did. Um, now, bear in mind, she's never used the light before. She could have just gone, I don't know, how to, how to work it, but she 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 figured out how to turn it down, and I didn't really notice. So that was great for the for the light. No, in. Yeah. And but after about five minutes, the fish started coming back. But yeah, we did sort of shock yeah. a little bit with a, with a, with a giant white so light. That, I didn't even fish, know that had gone on. I, he kind of whispered it to me as we were still oh, okay. shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we were we, like we on we Facebook and on Instagram at the same time, see with me. So we were all kind of just running around like headless chickens. But it's all coming um, up now. Yeah, so those fish were there. There's like four or five different, was it four or five? Yeah. Different shots that we had to Photoshop together to get some sort of fish in the area by our hand, which is not ideal. But like, that is kind of what it looked like. At the time, just with more fish. <laughs> um, yeah. Seeing more fish as well. It wasn't a massive amount of fish in there anyway. I know I'm no. saying that because I, I, I had a row. But no, <laughs> it, it wasn't like it was full of fish. But um, Well, yeah. it, it kind of was. Palm, it was an aquarium. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, no, we, we, yeah, we, we, we did. We got a shark this day, right? It's fine. That, that, that's, yeah. that's when we learned is that even though we turned up with continuous light dinner, as, as, as I said earlier, yeah, we're thinking, yeah, great, continuous lighting works, no flash, etc. But we still managed to scare the still fish. Still managed to scare the fish. So yeah, but once we, once we turned it down a little bit more, the the fish sort of came back just enough for like video and things like that. Yeah. And obviously that's the consideration. You can Photoshop these fish in here, but yeah. if you look at the video, which I'll probably cut to now, um, you can't Photoshop fish in video. Well, you no. can if you're really good. But you <laughs> know, I'm not really I, good. I'm, so not, I'm, not really, I'm not that good. So no. <laughs> Um, not so really yeah, good or company bothered uh, I mean I, I don't work for Pixar so that's <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we need to put Nemo in there somewhere yeah oh my god don't, yeah <laughs> just, there's, there's, a, there's a terrible <laughs> quality gif of just Nemo in the background <laughs> crudely cut yeah. out so yeah but if you watch the video you'll see how many fish are actually there really but um, but yeah but, the, but in terms of the shots well, they, they, they were thing. all there they were just all there at different times so that's why we, we cut them out of each picture because so one the same turned fish up and then one no. in this whole different fish yeah. Um, the other thing, the other issue we had with the images rather than the video was where the light was shining through the water. It was creating beautiful, um, like, water texture on her skin and everything, um, which showed up lovely on the video, but, like, didn't show up at all in the photos. So we have had to um, put, an overlay. put an overlay on that afterwards in Photoshop to get, um, get the same kind of effect as the video did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, that is just one thing you can't sort of really plan for. No. It's just something that comes up. You know, on, on the shoot, and I can see how that would be, um, that 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 would be an issue because like, mm. it, it it makes total sense in the video because it's motion, but then photo does it not make the skin look a bit weird? Maybe like, it wasn't even that; it just didn't show up at all. Did no, it? there was, there was nothing, nothing at all. Nothing. There was no texture, and it, it was missing something. So we were like, "Let's try it," and it worked. So um, yeah, and mm. I think that like we do a lot in post production, don't we? We like yeah. Obviously, we, we try and get as much right in in camera as possible obviously. well you've, yeah you've got to get it right in camera you've got to get the pose in right you've got to get the light in right and you've got to get the angle but there's a lot of tweaks you can do to yeah. make that image pop in lightroom and photoshop afterwards and we do we do I do a lot of that i think that's how we've upped our game a little bit this year in that we've gone right how this is great but how can we make that image better post like and done things like let's put an overlay on that bit let's put a texture on that bit let's like tweak it a little bit yeah and that is a lot of work to put into a single image, but if it's going to make that image, hundred mm, percent. Yeah. So we we really do. We we do. I would rather spend hours on one image and make it absolutely perfect and go. Oh my god! I can't believe you captured this. This is amazing. Then oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Like what's the point? In, oh, that's nice. That's not what we're here for. We're here yeah. to create amazing artwork for every single customer. We want that to be like wow. I want that on my wall. Yeah, it's going on my wall. Which it normally does, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, that's going on my wall. <laughs> even yeah. the naked ones uh, yeah, the amount of yeah. people that come in and have naked children go oh yeah I'm going to put that on my wall love it do it celebrate yourself I love it <laughs> maybe in the bedroom not in the living room yeah <laughs> please don't put it yeah, in the living room yeah right in the hallway right, right <laughs> where yeah. the GPD mm. man can see you like yeah. you know like yeah yeah, um, yeah it's uh, but if you talk you know you talk about an aquarium shoot that's about as aquarium e yeah. as it gets <laughs> yeah is that, that we, we had to do the, yeah, the, the, the this, yeah, this Please in call my head, the fish tunnel. Sorry, we, we had to shoot the fish <laughs> tunnel, yeah. <laughs> this in my head was like her having a connection with the fish. Moana, like. Yeah, yeah, a bit of Moana going on, you know what I mean? Like, 
at one with nature. Build a spiritual connection. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Talking to this, them fish, you know. This podcast is taking a turn. <laughs> yeah, the name of the fish whisperer. You know, just like. mm. Yeah, but I, I think that no, translates. Yeah. It does translate, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I lo- lo- love that one. I think it's probably my favourite one from the entire shoot. Oh, this um, this next one's my favourite one. Well, yeah, this is 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 close. I I think what you said about the about the the fact that the only thing that bugs me a little bit is the the height of the wall. Yeah, because yeah. oh, obviously yeah. you have to look at it. But then at the same and time, and I would point it out to everyone else. It's going to bug everyone else. But yeah, but I mean, unless you go to like some crazy like Dubai, equi- yeah, <laughs> aquarium in Dubai where it's floor to ceiling. Yeah, and there's like you know I don't know what whatever they do it in. In, in Dubai, do they like fire you through the uh, aquarium fish tank or something in like a yeah. little escape pod? Like, what? They, they, the, they got a water slide that goes yeah. through the fish tank and you could, it's inside the hotel and you can go diving inside the, like, the it's fish crazy. tank. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's bonkers. So unless you do that. So let's make a plan to do that. Formula God, one next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> we started off now. <laughs> And I like to spend money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, oh, you can't have a lens, let's go to Dubai. <laughs> well, we can't have a lens because we need to be able to afford Dubai. Anybody well, want to yeah, book uh, us for Dubai? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 please do. Please do. Um, okay, next, next, next one then. Yeah, this is the last one. Yeah, yeah. so this one's my favourite one. So we've got We've plenty. had this bodysuit for so long and had no way to use it. Yeah. Like we bought this from Eastio, like, last year. No, it wasn't last year, but this is the beginning of the last... Oh, it was, it was last, last year, year in yeah. 2022. But like the beginning of last year, we bought it while we were in lockdown, I think. Yeah. And had no way to use it. And I was like, well, this should be perfect. Yeah, it was absolutely perfect. I mean, we did have a little bit of a, a hoo-ha over the throwing of the, the train, but I mean, that oh, happens we every... Have, we should have put that in with a slideshow. Uh, we'll have, have to cut, cut to a right, video. So, so we're about to cut to... Um, an outtake. An outtake. So uh, obviously trying to get a bit of motion... Specifically in the video, so I'll show the, the shot first, right? So what's happening in this shot is um, there's a bit of motion in the in, in the train, and we wanted to shoot in slow motion, so it's like uh, you know like, billowing. Yeah, like like, uh, like like a fish, like a manta ray sort of thing, you know. Yeah. So the motion of the water, but on one of the takes, which is this one here, Christy um, overshot. Yeah, overshot it slightly, and it went over the over the head. Can I just so, add that Christy tries her hardest at throwing these um, dresses? I, I make her do it every time, but she never gets it how I want it. <laughs> Abigail is very particular, <laughs> and if Abigail Abigail needs to do it herself, <laughs> well, I can't take four plans. <laughs> check the dress, can I? So we we always end up having a bit of a a, barn. a yeah a little bit of a to do. When we when we do a, th- a heated debate, I would like to call it. Yeah, whenever we do a, a train throw, but do you know what? We got it in the end. We, we did, always yeah. we always get it in the end. But I mean, it takes us a few. You're not doing few it right. <laughs> you're not. You you throw it up, not out. <laughs> or, so yeah, because you make it go at a really weird angle, and I don't know how you do it. Like, oh, it's really difficult. My fav my favorite quote from the entire shoot was. Of course, you did it right for Palmer. So when <laughs> so when you were filming, and I had to do another toss. And literally, I did our first take, didn't I? And we yeah. got it. Yeah, it was and on, and yeah. it was just, oh, of course you got it right for Palmer. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And I, I didn't have my camera in my hand. <laughs> just tickled me. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, it, it, as you can see on the video, it looks fantastic. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that was quite funny. She must be wondering what the hell is going on. Because really. like, is... she just stayed in position. She was like, yeah, yeah, she was. I she was like, to do? Am I being taken home? Yeah, she did, now? didn't she? She didn't even move. <laughs> so it was still on top of her head, and she just sat there with it. It was a bit like Beyonce in her pregnancy photo because she had a veil and she... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. this this pause um, was a little bit more strenuous um, on the client than the other ones. So we we had to shoot this really quick, didn't we? She, um, she's on her knees and to get that shape, she had to kind of lift herself up a little bit to get that kind of arch in her back and her shoulders so that... It doesn't seem like an awful lot, but when like you're pregnant and all our weight, yeah, and the the pressure on your like hips and everything, oh my god, yeah. So Horrendous. like just that that little bit of a movement to get it up like that. I mean, it, it makes the shot. She looks fantastic, but we had to do that one pretty quickly. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Let her yeah. relax. Give her a second. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Let her relax. Um, but I think that well, I know. I it think worked. I know that worked. Yeah, yeah. that is my favorite one. Yeah, it's, it is lovely. And obviously the background is the most, again, aquarium-y. You know, yeah. word. Mm. Um, and we didn't have to Photoshop any fish no, in this we didn't, one. No, no, they no, all the, came to yeah, have a look. This, this is, this is the, the, the point where I couldn't get the light to go over. Um, so that's probably yeah. where the, why all the fish ran over there. The fish run? No, they swim. They swim. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it's... 
Uh, <laughs> this is, this yeah, podcast yeah, is so educational. So educational <laughs> for me. <laughs> But um, yeah, this is like it was like it was like a bit of a reef, wasn't it? It was a bit yeah. uh, with the fish tunnel was a bit more sort of open. This was where obviously all the fish <laughs> hang out, like you know. And um, um, again, in terms of the lighting, we I'm trying to remember what it was. Yes, so we had so we the, had an LED panel, didn't we, in front? Yeah. Did we have one behind as well? I don't think we no. had it on this no, shot, and we, then we swapped for the, we had another pause that we did, and then we put a, we backlit that one. Yeah, yeah. So. I think this was actually the Gordox. Um, yeah, it was Gordox yeah, in front. This, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was the um, what we'd use as the backlight. So this is a, look. If you look at the shadows there now, you can see it's quite sort of quite harsh but yeah. soft. It's 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 a very I I I really like. It. I'm starting to get back into sort of harsh <laughs> fill light because people are quite scared of it normally. You know, you got everything to be soft and whatever. Yeah. And, and I I tend in to some like, so. in some. Um, situations that is right yeah, like you don't absolutely. want ugly shadows but, but then sometimes it look, brings look at that shadow like really defining her jawline yeah. and like it yeah. works for the this doesn't it the I arm I love the arms like, yeah. it just looks it looks really beautifully two tonal and it's yeah. um, and, and that is just literally a bare bulb and how it picks up just enough of that train so that we still get a movement but you, that's you not a main focused. focus because yeah. that could really take over something like that and it doesn't like the that focus is on her beautiful face and sorry um her beautiful face and and the fact that she's pregnant yeah and that's um, that's that's what maternity photography is all about it is yeah. i think i don't know i'm not the expert <laughs> and i do you know what i really liked the she had that tattoo on her leg and it's like yeah. the right colors and it's just a little bit of her you know bringing out a little bit of her yeah mm. i love a tattoo yeah me too mm. Yeah, cool. But yeah, I mean, overall, guys, Bristol Aquarium shoot. Loved it. Um, yeah, mm. I think very it was, successful. It, I think. Yeah, very good. Very very. Considering good. all the the elements, we had to kind of. I mean, it took with. a lot of pre-planning. Yes. And a yeah. lot of well, I hope this is going to go right. We'll plan it, but like we don't actually know because we um, haven't done it. And we did have a lot of bodies, didn't we? Like with yeah. Maxie Lee, the hair and makeup came with us in case we need to do quick touch-ups in between. Um, obviously, we had Kirsty to help us with like. Okay. Yeah, holding lights and things like that, and um, yeah, it was a lot of bodies there. Whenever we don't usually have, she was. Yeah, I remember yeah, the time yeah. I turned around and she was like, "Fish." Yeah, yeah she absolutely <laughs> loves aquariums. Like, you know, she only this is the second one she's ever been to. I, I took her to one in San Marlo in 2019. She'd never gone before. She loves animals, and she was a, she was literally like a five year old running around. So, she, so next time we went on safari with Kirsty. <laughs> yeah, anything involving animals would be perfect. But yeah, so we. We right. don't we don't normally have that many bodies on <clears throat> on location. No. Um. But no, we we needed yeah, we had it. Yeah. A very we? tight time limit. We had whole hands on deck when we were picking yeah, all the equipment no. and running to the next location. There's a lot of em elements that could have gone wrong. Some things that like kind of didn't work our way. The light didn't and stuff like that. Like we had to kind of work around and yeah, like yeah. find. But I think like you've got to be resourceful, especially shooting on location. You have to be resourceful because you're not. There's so many un un unknowns. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it went well. Uh, each episode, we are going to be answering a question. Um, obviously, this is our first one, so we are going to put it over to Palmer to ask us a question. Um, but if you do have any any questions on any maternity or uh, newborn photography that you want to ask, just leave it in the comments, and we'll do one every episode. Mm. My question for you guys this episode is it's around um the process of maternity photography versus other types of photography so i've i've noticed it that there's a lot more goes into it than just taking a photo um i wanted to know how long it took you guys to sort of figure that out and what lessons you learned on the way oh my god that's a whole episode in itself um right so short answer um last year <laughs> <laughs> um no so like up until probably 2019, when I went on maternity leave really, wasn't it? That we were kind of still in our headspace of shoot, 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 and give nearly all of it away for free kind of situation. It was like shoot and burn, they call it, um, photographer, where you're not, not charging an awful lot and you're just giving away, basically giving them all digitals. And um, it's, it's serving the masses rather than really honing in on yeah. getting it right and having the experience behind it. Yeah, so then when Christy came on board after her maternity leave, I knew I wanted to get out of that kind of 
situation of just constantly having customers it's great to have so many customers but like I wasn't making any money off those customers and also I was burning out like so often um so I knew I wanted to get out of that situation so when we were on maternity leave and when we were in the pandemic during lockdown and every time we've had any sort of gap where we weren't able to work for whatever reason um we've gone right how can we make this better so then it was well when I was pregnant this happened when I was pregnant this happened we kind of shared our stories of what made a difference during our um own pregnancies and um well where do we want like if we had gone for a shoot somewhere else what would we have wanted and it was all down to the experience I don't want to go so like the first place a lot of people come after they've had the baby is to us like we do shoot within five to 14 days of that baby being born so a lot of the time they have first big like journey out if they haven't got to go back to hospital for every reason is to come to us and it's a, like a big shock to the system having to take all of that stuff with you and leave the house with this new person and I think the fact that we have both done it ourselves we've both got young boys we know what it's like mm. to like the anxiety that comes with have I got everything like you, you're, you're not just in charge of yourself anymore you're in charge of an, another human keeping another human alive and everything you have to take with you it's a massive thing to leave the, to just to leave the house mm-hmm. isn't it so uh, knowing that we put everything into making making the experience as comfortable as we can even down to having um like your um your like the breast pads in the in the yeah. bathroom and your, your toiletries in the bathroom so if you get you and you've forgotten something like that it's fine chances are you've forgotten something for yourself rather than the baby so yeah. we've got the mothers covered as well as the babies like we've got all the nappies and everything like spare nappies we've got spare um wet, wet wipes, wipes and all that stuff. nappy rash cream and all the Just things that you might that. we've might... got sterilizers we've got bottle warmers we've got microwave for feeds like we've got and we've got snacks and everything like for maternity customers as well as the newborn customers to keep their energy levels up because even like just doing a studio session for maternity they've got to keep eating like this it's like it's as stupid as it sounds they'll probably forget to eat before they come and then standing up for any period of time it's hard work so we've got them covered with snacks and drinks and things like that we've got them covered when they come in because they probably haven't eaten themselves they've made sure the baby's fed um and just little things like, like bottles of water to keep them going and like just comfy chairs yeah and it's always warm here it's always at the temperature so we've got climate control in the studio and it was all about everything leading up to right the baby's content we put them in the thing in the props or whatever take a photo that's the easy part that for us like it's all about that baby being content the parents being content and feeling like oh my god i'm so relaxed like everything runs a lot smoother when everybody's kind of calm and feels relaxed yeah absolutely because babies feed off that don't they they feed off the energy in the room if the mother is tense that baby's going to be tense and we are not going to get what we need no. so it's all about making sure everyone's comfortable it's a nice relaxed atmosphere and that ties in then with why we do a pre-session because the parents get to know us before they come in for their sessions we sit down at the table a cup of tea cup of coffee we go through all our props and go right what would you like what would what colors would you like what where would these photos go do they need to match a kind of um a room kind of color scheme and things and then in their heads they know oh well she's not going to give us something we don't like because we've already told her exactly what we don't want they're going to design something that we do want it's going to match everything they relax with that element because they know what's coming they've had a tour of the place so they know exactly where they go in they know where the toilets are they know where the studio is um and, then, and they know us because we've sat down with them we've got a, a relationship with them now so they relax with us they're not going oh my god what well, she's like really like um well whatever like not approachable or not down to earth like I'm kind of pride myself on the fact that I am <laughs> like down to earth as far <laughs> down on that ground as you can possibly get like I will talk to anybody about anything like I am not bothered in the slightest so we talk about their birth stories we talk about like what happened when they were in labor or we talk about like how they cope in now and like just sharing experiences yeah just share those experiences with each other and we can become sort of like sort of a mum's club don't we like a parenting oh, club oh yeah every day like once they've left like they don't actually like leave and think oh well that's done now we won't see them again it's like oh girls do you see this and they message us on like instagram and stuff replying to our stories oh girls that's amazing i can't believe you're well done can't wait for baby to come back in and like they become part of our family like. yeah and they don't just visit us once today so like you know if if you're going to do even just newborn 
By the time the babies arrived, they've already been in the studio at least once. By the time they've had their pictures, they've been in the studio at least three times. Mm -hmm. So it's not a case of um, they just come, they have their pictures and they leave. They they get to know us mm. and and you are right. Like everybody, I don't think we've had somebody that's come in for a maternity and newborn session that doesn't. I've never seen a, seen them again. <laughs> no, or, or doesn't even in they, doesn't they all in, yeah they all interact on they and yeah. and they like if we win an award we'll put it up and everybody congratulations. Oh my God, girls, that's amazing. Yeah, I can't there. yeah it's not really just well. oh yeah it's oh that. We have essays, don't we? Yeah, genuine, we, like, heartfelt messages, and it means yeah, so much. Like, it's I know. people genuinely happy for us. I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And when we won the uh, Welsh Maternity and Newborn Photographer of the Year, we had two separate long emails, paragraphs, of previous customers um, just saying how fantastic it yeah. was and, like, how it was well-deserved. And, like, and how, they, how, how their experience in the studio was, like... Like they expl- explained how they experienced their sessions. They were like, I can't, like, we know, knew that you were going to win it because, like, we felt the same way that you explained it. That's exactly how we feel when we came in. Yeah. So, yeah, it's worth it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Makes I think that difference. was the best part about that, wasn't it? Was the yeah. having those emails. Like, people don't need to do that. That's not something they have to do. That's something because they've, they've enjoyed their experience so much. They've taken time out of their day to sit down and write that. Write an email to us, yeah. It's nice, isn't it? And I think the, the thing with that is it, it, it makes it so much more personal because there's no other type of, I mean, weddings come close, but there's no other type of like photography that offers people like that much connection. Mm. And, and, and you, like you say, you do feel like family at the end of it. Yeah. You know, the, you're there for a very special part of their life, which is their, their, their newborn child being, being, yeah. being brought into the world. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, right, right there. But <laughs> no. you're one of the. I mean, we have been asked. <laughs> yes, no, I'm sure, you sure you have. But it's, um, yeah, it's 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 a case of you're the first sort of place people go to with yeah. their, with their baby, really. You know? And once they've had that experience, once if they ever have another child, like yeah. they they, they don't even hesitate. Us. They and and we've been one of the first people to be told, haven't we? We had yeah. to keep we had I to mean, keep it kills a secret me every time. Abigail can't keep a secret for anything. I mean, she does when it's that situation, but we. Had I can't to, keep a secret though. Nobody knew I was pregnant. Okay, but I we, can't keep a secret when I need to. It's the fact that if you don't tell me it's a secret, I just tell people. <laughs> so we are, we were approached by a, a previous client who uh, was pregnant, and we just found out that she was pregnant. Um, and she messaged us, didn't she? She was like, "Right, nobody knows yet. I haven't told any family, but I wanted to tell you so that I've got my space and I don't miss out. And also, let's do some announcement. Yeah. yeah, so that was nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> we spend way too much time together. Um, yeah, that was lovely. Yeah, you, you tend to find that really people do come back like w- w- yeah. once you've experienced it once and we were really nervous when we took the plunge into changing mm-hmm. our pricing and everything which again we'll get into like further down the line but we we changed the way we price things completely didn't we yeah and from the outside it looks like oh my god that's gone so much more expensive it hasn't like it's just the way that we're operating the, the business and everything. Yeah. It, it was all just it all just changed and it looked more expensive than um previous and we we're like oh our previous customers are going to hate this they're not going to want to pay it and they're like okay great and they knew they were happy to pay it because they knew the experience they were going to get was worth the money like and that like is well there's a difference between expense and value isn't it hmm. like yes it's more expensive but it's far 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 more valuable than yeah. the shoot and burn like you're saying before and i know yeah. exactly what you're talking about because there are those types of photographers out there who do just just turn up shoot anything for the same sort of style, not a lot of connection there really. You just sort of, you know, turn up, use your photos, bye bye, you never yeah. see me again. And that that's cheap, but and there's always going to be a market for that because there's always yeah. people oh, yeah, that that um maybe we are not the right price point for those kind of people, and and that they need a photographer within their price range, and so there's always going to be a need for that. And I think most people start off with we that mentality because how do you how do you yeah. hone your craft and get and get to a, a, the level that you know yeah that we're at now without doing that you 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 need to start somewhere don't you absolutely and if you're not learning you're not growing so like you constantly need to be honing in your craft and like christy will text me and she's like what are you doing then i'm like i can't talk to you i'm on a webinar or i'm, I'm doing a workshop and like we do mentorships with other photographers because like I love learning like I I would have been in full-time education for the rest of my life if like that was kind of an option an option yeah um <laughs> if, if we lived in like Sweden you, yeah yeah, yeah it would have been great all um yeah. 
but yeah i i'm not one for teaching other people things necessarily like i couldn't stand up in front of a class and teach it but to sit in a class and learn from people like even if you take one little tiny element from every single person you speak to like you look how much you're learning like i love just learning off other people so i will constantly watch and other people's, and um, if you look at somebody's work and you think oh my god that is amazing tell me what you know how did you get to that that level because we we want to get yeah we, we want to make sure we want to make sure that everybody's artwork is the absolute best we can provide yeah so like i will sit there and i will learn as much as possible with the hours i'm given to make sure that they are getting the artwork they deserve and making sure every element of our business is, is at the same level, isn't it? So yeah. it's not just like we had put a lot into the newborn side of things because that's what we were concentrating on. And we were lacking on the maternity side. Yeah. So we put everything into maternity, didn't we? We yeah, did so the mentorship. Lockdown, we we did like, this is courses. Like we need to do better in maternity. This isn't working for us. We wouldn't be happy with this. So like we need to make it better. So then we did so many online courses and a mentorship and like we were like right how can we make this better what are we lacking in we bought the whole wardrobe we bought like we went Invested. out and we practiced we bought yeah. a fake bump so that christy can pose for me so i can work out what i was doing wrong and where, where i needed to work on things and then and then when i was when i was doing it when i was posing then i could feel where i needed to be and then and i tell can... her no right well this needs to change that needs to change so she knows physically how her body needs to feel to pose those people, so that so i can, can translate that then into the client so it's all yeah it's a lot of time and effort but it i think our imagery is like oh sorry i think our imagery is like as skyrocketed from that and you can see the difference yeah yeah i think that's do you know that's a, that's a good idea for another episode i think yeah. is going deeper into that and comparing images from <laughs> please don't make me do it yeah yeah, yeah. I, we're, we're, we're gonna, it's we're gonna get really it. uncomfortable yeah. but um no i think i think we really good to see um the the the, the progression it, we went to the um the, the newborn show up in uh, carpentry and there was a lady there i can't remember her name now she was doing a uh, a presentation while we were at oh yeah the christy kept interrupting with oh look what i found like <laughs> christy we're trying to watch yeah, yeah we, i yeah. know but they were beautiful God, little christy. bonnets and we had God. to get them no, there was the last pack of bonnets couldn't right, well, you got the last pack of bonnets you've got to get moving I think. yeah i was like christy just take the call please <laughs> leave me alone. i'm listening Bye, everyone. Um, <clears throat> we'll have to we'll have to dig up um, who, who it was but um she was Comparing her old images yeah, to, she was, yeah. to, to new. And showing the light indifference and yeah. what, how much the light didn't change. And, and I say old, I think she was talking about images from like 2014 or no, 12, I don't 12, even 13. think it was that far no, back. No, no, it, I think she'd only been started a couple of years <coughs> ago and she had just honed her craft so fast. Yeah, I think it was 2016 maybe. Yeah, then. yeah. Yeah, yeah so but you know, if you look at something, right, from 2012 and then 2014 and then 2018 and yeah, then... Yeah, not going back to 2012. No, but it, like <laughs> the difference, like if you compare 2012 to 2014... The difference is yeah. is like you it's noticeable difference yeah but if you go from 2012 to now oh like world apart you wouldn't even think it's the but, same photographer but year on year you're still seeing the difference in it because it's constant it's constant learning and if if yeah, we we'll go, go back to next last year <laughs> <laughs> um, if we go if we fast forward to next year and we look back at this year or last year now um we are going to see a difference again because we're not going to just stop at where we are now. We still need to be reaching the next level. To this year, we were like, right, how can we make this even better this time? So we went back to the, like, it was Christmas. So we were like, we got nothing to do. Let's like go back to the drawing board. And we worked on a few things. And we we did another... Um, lighting course. Lighting course. And we... Because uh, I, could, like, I couldn't work out how to light a specific prop. And I was like, I just don't understand where I'm going wrong. So we went back, we looked at it. And then I sent it, perfect example, I sent it to Palmer. I was like, Palmer, look what we did today. And he was like, oh my God, you've not smashed that light in. I was like, thank you, I've been practicing. And I think he thought I was being sarcastic, but I had actually been we practicing. We genuinely yeah, went yeah, back yeah. And, and, and it wasn't working. did a lighting so course I, I went on and, that. Yeah. So I went and had a look and then obviously it worked. And that, and it, do you know what? It was only that one little segment that we needed yeah. out of that entire course. It was that one little segment that we needed but that's Changed what we it. that's it what we needed yeah. to get it to where it so again if you look at at that first baby of this year and you look at the last baby of last year there's already growth yeah huge yeah and, and it's you know, nice you know, growing. exactly <laughs> no but that, that, that's, that's that, the name of this week's episode yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us for our first ever episode of Mother, Baby and Us. Um, next time, we are going to be comparing some of our older work to our newer work and what we've learned in between. You can follow our work on Abigail Lewis Photography on all socials. We're on Instagram, 
Facebook and YouTube. Just search Abigail Lewis Photography. Until the next episode, bye. Bye. bye.